Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my channel Tech with Eddie, which is all about integrating your IoT devices with your preferred home automation ecosystem. You all know very well by now that my videos are all about using DIY platforms and their plugins to integrate my not so certified IoT devices into Apple HomeKit. The most important thing here is to get the same rich home automation experience by spending less. So please do take a look and don't feel shy to hit the like and subscribe button to follow along. So on my continuous quest, in today's video, we will use the Dafang hack and integrate the Xiaomi cam into Apple HomeKit. The good part here is that this hack is applicable for both for the Dafang as well as the Wise cams, and they work the same. They expose the hardware features directly into Apple HomeKit without the need of their apps. Most importantly, it runs locally and no need of the cloud services. Surprisingly enough, both cams look the same. And if it wasn't the color difference between the two, I'm sure I wouldn't have noticed the difference between them. They are the same in hardware specs, but they use their own proprietary firmware. So for all of this integration to work with Apple HomeKit, we will need obviously a Dafang cam. It can be also used with a Wise cam as well. Two, a memory card. It could be a class 10, either 16 or a 32 GB, up to you. Three, the most important, your preferred home automation ecosystem. In my case, it's hoops, but can definitely be done in HomeBridge as well. Now, I've broken down the videos into three parts with the timestamps in the description. They are one, flashing the cam, two, the plugin configuration, three, plus a bonus of adding the wise cam into your Synology NAS using the surveillance station. Now, don't forget to stay till the end to know which video is coming up next week. So let's not waste time, like I always say, and let's jump into this tutorial. The custom firmware has two parts. The first part is altering the stock firmware to boot from a micro SD, and it needs to be flashed over the stock firmware. This will only be needed to be done once, and most importantly, use a 512 MB partitioned logical drive. It works well. The second part is the custom firmware files which contains the custom software. All you have to do is paste them onto your SD card and after you complete step one, and then modify it by editing some files in the micro SD card, which we will go through as well. So first things first, you want to download the uh, bootloader into your uh, memory card for the particular model. So in this case, we will be with the Xiaomi Xiaofang T20. So uh, let's click on that and uh, it will download a file then all you got to do is re rename it to demo.bin, copy it and paste it onto your memory card. Once that is done, insert the memory card into your uh, camera, hold down the setup button on the camera while plugging in the USB power cable. Keep the setup button pressed for another 10 seconds and uh, wait till it turns blue. Uh, once the light is blue for t after a couple of seconds, 10 seconds to be precise, 10 or 15 seconds, uh, let the flashing process complete. Once you see a blue LED shining for five seconds without any blinking, it means that the uh, flashing process has completed and then uh, um, you are good to go into the second level, which is loading the custom firmware uh, into the memory card. To load the uh, custom firmware, let's go back to the initial page and make sure you download zip, which is around about 560 uh, megabytes and uh, this is how it looks okay and all you got to do is open up the firmware underscore mod copy all the files go into your memory card delete the demo dot bin paste all of the files and within this section we need to tweak three files so that we can uh, 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 load the custom firmware correctly. To do that, go into the config. The first one you want to do is update the RTSP file. So in my case, I'm using Atom, the program to uh, edit the files. And within this file, you want to make sure you update with whatever parameters. So in my case, I will use here width of 1280. And with a height of 720, I'm going to delete the MJPEG RTSP. I'm going to delete 
this one as well. For the video, I've tested it and it, it works well, 299 bitrate, again, it all depends. And uh, the frame rate, I've left it to 15 and I left the default uh, video format. For the audio format, I left it as it is, didn't change anything. Let's save it. The next file you want to update is the static IP. Uh, in my case, just delete all of these files. In my case, I'm going to use uh, .8698. You can go through your router and uh, select any other IP address, it's up to you. And then the last one is the Wi-Fi username and password. Now. Uh, a couple of forums that I, re uh, I read was that uh, the uh, SSID information, you need to tinker a bit in terms of additional settings. You can choose what you want. I tested this configuration before I could come up with this video. So um, I will use all of this and uh, it worked well. And all you got to do at this line is uh, insert in your password. File, save. Once that's done, let's eject the memory card. Then we take the cam and just make sure you put the uh, memory card and uh, let's boot it up. Now once the now once the boot up is completed, it should take a couple of seconds. You, you, you should hear a couple of click sounds from the camera and uh, let's go in and uh, log into that IP address that we had assigned to the camera. Okay. Now once you log into the uh, link that you specified in the static IP file, you will see this message beat Safari or uh, Chrome. So uh, let's click on show details. Um, there's no point of viewing the certificate and let's visit the website. And if your system does prom uh, prompt the password to provide that as well. So uh, there it is, the camera is up and running. You can see it on my screen, it's right here at the side. Uh, very quick over here, you can go into the camera controls and turn on all of these filters over here uh, and options. Uh, uh, state to this view how the camera will work and you can also go into the configuration you can put in the time uh, update the NTP server as well as the host name right now it's Dafang so if you update it over here it updates uh, this section over here uh, you can go into the administration if you want to update the password which is iSmart12 and the username is root so if you want you can uh, change that as well uh, video, you can go and tweak in the settings, but we've already done in the RTSP. That's the values that we had uh, put in. Uh, you can change it. And this is the link that we want to do. So let's uh, copy the link and uh, let's save it into our file. And we'll use it again. So basically, this is what you're seeing me right now. And we have the camera uh, uh, load it successfully with the uh, custom firmware. Now let's go into the part of uh, loading in the uh, plugin to expose the same cam into Apple HomeKit. Now remember, the Dafang hack hasn't been updated for quite some time. If it doesn't work for you, you can always revert back to the original firmware just by removing the micro SD card and letting it boot again. Now for the plugin config, we will use the same plugin that we used last week with the Wise Cam for the uh, Dafan Cam to uh, show up in Apple HomeKit. To do this, we will paste the same configuration and just replace the RTSP uh, parameter, save it and expose it to Apple HomeKit. Let's log into our Hoops platform. Let's go into the configuration. So let's copy paste the configuration and paste it after this. And the first thing we want to update is the name of the cam. So we're going to name it as Dafang, manufacturer as Xiaomi. And we can leave all the other information as it is. The next one we want to change is the RTSP link. So we had copied that previously. So let's copy and let's update it over here. The same thing we want to do that for the still image source. And uh, the frames, we can drop it down to 15 and uh, we are good to go. So let's save changes. And once the bridge has restarted, let's happen, open Apple Home. And there we have, we have the two cams showing up. So let's double click on this one and wait for the service to start. So there we have, we have the cam up and running 
uh, in the uh, Apple Home, we have exposed the cam. Uh, we also see that the Wise cam is over here. So we've got uh, two cams over here. So we have the Wise cam over here. And if we go back, we've got the, the Funk cam up and running as well. So both cams are uh, exposed to Apple Home Kit. Uh, it's live, you all can't see me. So it's working perfectly in Apple Home Kit with the two cams exposed perfectly. Now let's go into the bonus section. Now there should always be a bonus and I put this section specifically for those who don't want to add a memory card and want to capture the footage straight onto their NAS uh, solution. Then there is another solution where we'll use a wise scan and a Synology surveillance station. Let's log into our Synology NAS. And once you're done that, please make sure you have the uh, surveillance station up and running. That one over here. So if you have it, please make sure you have it installed. And once it's installed, have the service running and click on open. It works well with uh, Google Chrome, but in our case, we're using uh, Safari. Let's close this. And what we want to do is add in a cam. So let's go to IP camera. Uh, let's add a cam. Quick setup. Let's select over here Wise version v2 and let's put in the IP address and the password that we had assigned. Once that's completed, let's click on test connection. So there we are, it can see me clearly and let's hit next, finish and then we can click on it. And then we can see live that this is uh, broadcasting to the Synology surveillance station and it's, it's working perfectly. So from the last week we hacked it, we got the RTSP protocol working and now we can use it in two hour um, NAS solution by not adding any additional memory card. It just works flawless. Okay, so uh, that's it. And uh, you can also see the Apple Home app again. So there we have, we have the Dafang cam up and running perfectly. And if we go back, we also have the Wise cam broadcasting to Apple HomeKit. So uh, we have both these cams working. It does take some time to trigger up. And we also imported uh, the camera into Synology NAS. That's about it. Finally, there we are. Collaboratively, we have flashed and configured the Dafang cam into Apple HomeKit using the RTSP protocol plus tinkered more into the software to enable other protocols to view the feed into your Synology NAS. Now to keep all of this going, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button because that's the motivator, that's the real driver for bringing all of this content for us, the more the merrier. So if there's anything I can help with, don't feel shy to leave a comment down below. Now, next week, I will show you on how to integrate the Synology surveillance station into Apple HomeKit. So stay tuned for that as well. So my friends, until the next time, stay safe, have a nice day, cheers, and happy automation.